All right, man, peace. So the great Kobe Bryant recently had to sit down and once again reassure LeBron James that he was not going to have to worry about Kobe Bryant's very virulent fan base attacking him as he tries to establish his own legacy with the LA Lakers. Kobe reminds me of a good pimp. He has to assure the new pimp on the scene that he's going to control all his hoes. He's like, don't worry, my holes are not going to run up on you and try to scratch your face. I have them all under control. <laughs> so anyway, they're going to talk about it and I'm going to chime in. I hear that, but it, you know, listen, if you're a fan of mine, you're a fan of winning. You're a fan of the Lakers. Right? I bleed purple and gold. So that's above anything else. Really. Absolutely. You bleed purple and gold and you even bled purple and gold those three separate times you tried to leave the team. Right, Kobe? After you won your first championship in 2000, after 2004, and after 2007, you went to Jerry West or Jerry Buss and you demanded a trade or to be let go so that you could sign with somebody else. But you bleed purple and gold. Absolutely. You know, Laker fans, since I was yay high, that's never going to change, right? And uh, we're spot winning championships. So the definitely. I definitely hear what you're saying, Kobe. It's about winning championships with you. And it's all about winning championships. That's why you drove off Shaquille O'Neal, the most dominant player in the NBA at the time. Because it was all about winning championships for you. Definitely. They'll, they'll fall in line. Oh, definitely. They're going to fall in line. Did you hear that, Kobe fans? He said, you guys better fall in line and let LeBron James do his thing. Stop trying to run up on him and scratch his face. Well, good to see Rich Eisen there, too. All right, Kobe says Lakers fans will fall in line with King James. Oh, Max, yeah. you spent some time out in L.A. Yeah. I did, too. Can LeBron win over L.A.? Let me say this very quickly before Max Kellerman speaks. I think that not only can LeBron James win over L.A., but he will, especially if he maintains the level of offensive play that he's exhibited over the past couple of seasons with the Cleveland Cavaliers. If he brings that over to the L.A. market and he assists his teammates and their growth and their maturation, he's going to win over the fans. And for the most part, this year is going to be a proverbial mulligan for LeBron James. This year, he'll be allowed to relax and just do what he does best, which is stat pad. Next year, the pressure is going to be on him. No, not in the sense that he could ever be on the Mount Rushmore of Lakers. Okay. It's too late in his career. He I agree with that. Even if he won a championship and set up a new dynasty for them, the, you know, the Mount Rushmore uh, idea, which was so popular a couple of years ago with me. Let me say this before Max Kellerman continues, because the question is, can LeBron win over L.A.? The question is not, can LeBron get on the L.A. Lakers Mount Rushmore? So right off the bat, he's answering his own version of the question. I don't think that LeBron James is concerned with getting on the LA Lakers Mount Rushmore. I think that he is just concerned with adding his name to the lexicon of greats who have won a championship for that franchise because he knows all he has to do is win one championship. And the woke contingent that supports him, Nike and all his fanboys, they're going to claim that he's better than Jordan. They're going to say LeBron James is the only player to lead his team to a championship on three separate franchises. He knows he just has to get one. So I don't think that it's about getting onto the Mount Rushmore. He can never get onto the LA Lakers Mount Rushmore. Once again, even on my list, there are two former Lakers that are definitely above him. And on many people's lists, there's about four or five Lakers that are above him. Memes and lists on Twitter and everything and on sports shows, it's really about editing. It's the editing process, right? Like, you got to get rid of one of these guys. Not, they can't all be on. They can't all be in the top four. No franchise has a tougher Mount Rushmore than the Lakers because you got to leave off people like Wilt Chamberlain. Wilt Chamberlain could never find his way onto a Lakers Mount Rushmore, no way, shape, or not, not a chance. Absolutely. And let me say this. I get a lot of guys who come on my channel and they say that Wilt Chamberlain is the greatest basketball player of all time. I fervently disagree. Wilt Chamberlain is not the greatest basketball player of all time. Wilt Chamberlain is the most dominant athlete to ever participate in the NBA. That's what he is. He's the most dominant athlete to ever participate in the NBA. Not the greatest basketball player. He came up small way too many times in the playoffs against Bill Russell and against other competition to ever be considered the greatest basketball player of all time. You got Magic and Kobe for sure there. And then you have lifelong Lakers who've also worked in other capacities like Jerry West, for example, Stephen A. 
or 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 Shaquille O'Neal, who three peated with the Lakers, or the most forgotten Laker, that being Elgin Baylor, and you did not even mention him. That's why I have a video on Elgin Baylor called "Who's the Forgotten Laker," or or Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who may be you know the best argument against Michael Jordan in the modern era, and played at least half his great career with the team. LeBron is much more like Will. He's an unstoppable physical force, just like Will was. Hey, once again, you see how all these NBA television pundits are now starting to use the same correlation that I've been using for the past few months of LeBron James being the modern day Wilt Chamberlain? You see how that goes? He's gotten to the Lakers toward the end of his career, and maybe he'll win a championship there, but he will never occupy the place in the Lakers fans' hearts that Kobe Bryant does. Just won't. I agree with that. The Kobe Bryant fan base is the most passionate fan base, especially of any NBA athlete that I could think of. Maybe other than Allen Iverson, I would give the Allen Iverson fan base the edge in emotionality. But the Kobe Bryant fan base is the most fervent. There's no doubt about it. First of all... <clears throat> and the most delusional. I like how you asked that question because it's very slick of you because Thank the you. things that you said are irrefutable. Let me be the first to, as always, to point that out. It's not as always, you know. I mean, you, you dance better than Fred Astaire, but that's okay. Here's my point with you. That is not the real issue. You are, better than Stephen A. Smith. You, you oh. are such a, you are such a, a you are such a phony. And I'm getting on you. And Max knows that's why he's laughing because he knows where I'm getting ready to go with this. Hey, Max. Max Keller, where, 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 where you going to be at in October? How about November? How about November? How about January, Max? How about, how, 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 how about all the months? How about, how about, how about, how about March? I mean, we know where you're going to be, Max. And see, see, I don't have to raise my voice to make this point as ridiculous as because you know good and damn well where you're going to be. I know where I'm going to be. I know where I'm going to be. I know what time I'm going to be. Everybody's going out. Let me be very, very clear. My, LeBron James, of course he can win over LA. Now, this is not a Mount Rushmore conversation. Thank you, sir. Thank you for getting the conversation back on track. Because Max Kellerman was trying to figure out a way to extol LeBron James while also speaking facts. And he was struggling, so he had to create this fallacious argument about whether or not LeBron James could possibly get on Mount Rushmore. That's not what the question asked. All LeBron has to do to win over the LA fans is to win about 51 games this upcoming regular season. Go out in the playoffs no earlier than the second round in a very competitive series against either the Golden State Warriors or the Houston Rockets. And then next season, the pressure is going to be on him, assuming that Magic Johnson and Rob Palenka are able to bring another top-notch NBA star onto the squad. I got news for you. We, I love this man, but we might not put Jerry West on the Mount Rushmore of Lakers. Absolutely not. Not if we're going by championships. Not if we're going by success on the team. No, Jerry West would not be, at least not on the first Mount Rushmore. If you have more than one Mount Rushmore, then yes, Jerry West would be on the second one. When you take into account Magic, Kareem, Shaq, and Kobe, excuse me, you might not even put Jay West up there. So it's not a big deal about who's going to be on the Mount Rushmore. The question is, can you win over L.A.? I want to know, who are these idiots that have a problem with LeBron James being in Los Angeles? You are Well, we know who that is, Stephen A. Smith. The most fervent Kobe Bryant fan girls. And just to give them the benefit of the doubt, I don't even think that Kobe Bryant's fan base has a problem with LeBron James playing with the Lakers. I think that it's his most fervent fangirls that have the issue. They may feel threatened by LeBron, but they have to think like how Kobe thinks. You have to have the Mamba mentality. Kobe's attitude is that, from his perspective, he's in a no-lose situation. LeBron has to win at least two championships with the Lakers for Kobe to consider him to be on the level, to be spoken about in the same breath of a Kobe Bryant. That's what he's thinking to himself. So if you're a Kobe Bryant super fan, you should be happy that LeBron James with the Lakers because pretty much he's walked into a trap. He's no longer in Cleveland. He's no longer in proverbial Kansas. Now he's in Oz. He has to make sure that he reaches the wizard. He has to win the championship. He has to win at least one, really two in Kobe's mind because if LeBron James plays four years with the LA Lakers, and only wins one championship, or God forbid, wins none. Kobe Bryant in the aftermath is going to say, well, everybody can't handle the pressure of playing here. And he's going to leave it at that. It's going to be dot, dot, dot. 
part of Lakers, you have been a laughing stock. The only thing you've been popularized by over the last five years is an idiotic video of Swaggy P with a couple of his Oh, I thought you were going to say No, 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 no. Celebrating. No, like, hold on, hold on. Celebrating after losing 14 games in a row and stuff like that. That obviously is going to change now. The Lakers are going to contend. I think they're going to win a title in the next three years. And as long as LeBron James brings a championship to Tinsel Town, back to Laker Nation, okay, you will talk about him just like you talk about a lot of the other guys. He won't be on the Mount Rushmore like Wilt. You are not like Magic, not no, like no, Kobe. No, no. You won't talk about him like Wilt. You know why? Because Wilt was known as a chronic underachiever because as great as he was, he couldn't overcome Russell. The exactly. What is LeBron known as Stephen A. Smith? In the aftermath of LeBron James's career, when he gets evaluated appropriately outside of the corporate brainwashing, we're going to see him as a player who was not able to overcome the Golden State Warriors. People will say, well, the Golden State Warriors, they have all this talent. I got into a back and forth with one of these so-called wannabe basketball experts in the comments, and he tried to claim that the Golden State Warriors were the favorites to win a championship. All I had to do was present the odds in 2014 and in 2015. And before both of those seasons, the Cleveland Cavaliers were prognosticated to win the NBA championship. So even after the Golden State Warriors won the chip in 2015, coming into the 2015-2016 season, the Cavaliers were still expected to win the championship. They were still the favorites. So was it truly an upset that the Cavaliers beat the Warriors in the finals in 2016? Especially in light of how debilitated the Warriors clearly were with the Steph Curry injury, the Andre Iguodala injury, the Andrew Bogut injury. Draymond Green's foolishness. It's interesting how you view things when you get proper context. But there's no doubt in my mind that in regards to his overall potency, his effectiveness in the playoffs, LeBron James is an underachiever. The bottom line is that's not going to be LeBron. LeBron will never be associated with the Lakers. Lakers. Well, how could you say that, Stephen A. Smith, when you're the one who's on record as stating that you could never consider LeBron James on the level of Michael Jordan because he's 3-6 and six in the finals? And he's come up way too small and too many big spots in the playoffs. Those are your words. So how could you say that LeBron will never be known as an underachiever? It's one thing for LeBron James to go out like he did in 2008 against the Boston Celtics. With all his guns fully emptied. And you could say, you know what, LeBron gave everything that he could. But he just has too many moments where he seems to give up on his team. Even last year, despite some of the big games that he had against the Warriors in the finals... There's no doubt that he gave up on his team at the end of game one, even though he scored 51 points. And he gave up on his team in the last three games, and he came up with that silly excuse about his hand basically being broken when he walked out to the dais with his wife's scarf wrapped around his damn hand. So give me a break. He's Wilt Chamberlain all over again. Look, look. Here, well, the you know being slick. Brick. Well, I like that. Mm. I yeah. like that, that brick. General Hospital. I mean, right. I mean, if you're going to say brick, tell us why. I know, you, my aunt Linda it. just asked me, when's Steve Bain going to be back September, on? September 6th and September 7th. I yeah, Linda, be back September 6th, September 7th. Brick is good. Well, they ought to give you a promotion in the mob on General Hospital. They might. They might. They might. They might. Because Sonny you're, you're the one being on slick. You know what this is really What's about. What's it's not, will he win over Lakers? Are they going to root for him? What do you think? They're going to root for their best player against the other team? If he wins a championship, they're not going to root for LeBron James? Of course they are. What we're really talking about, is he ever going to really win them over? Yeah. Will they embrace him? Now, let me give you an example of what I mean, okay? Best player, like, you know, like Mark, Mike Trout might be the greatest player of all time. Like, he still hasn't eliminated himself from that discussion this deep into his career. Once upon a time, that was A-Rod. Shortstop who hit like... No, sir. Alex Rodriguez was never considered the greatest player of all time. And I like A-Rod. But Barry Bonds is the greatest player that I've ever seen. The most talented player that I've ever seen is Ken Griffey Jr. A-Rod was great for a while. Mike Trout is phenomenal right now. I don't think that anyone seriously considers him as a possibility of being the greatest player ever. But, you know, he's a 5-2 player. He's certainly up there for consideration. Like that? To play the field, the whole thing? He gets traded to the Yankees. Oh, my God, this is, he's going to be the greatest ever. You know, Jeter's a big deal, but not like this. But A-Rod got there in the second half of his career. And Yankees fans felt an allegiance to Derek Jeter to the point that one of the funniest jokes in Ted, I think it was the first Ted, right. was Derek Jeter's accidentally shot at a Yankees game. Mm -hmm. And you hear some voice say off screen, you shot Jeter, he's a biracial angel. And then you hear another voice say, you should have shot A-Rod. 
In other words, and A-Rod won a championship with the Yankees as the vital cog in that. Right. In other words, even though he won a championship, there was something about A-Rod that Yankees fans never fully embraced, partly because their allegiance was to Jeter. That's also happening with LeBron and Kobe. Hold up, first of all. That's not a bad analogy. First of all, you're wrong. Flagrantly wrong. And I spoke to Kobe about this, but here's why you're wrong. Max Kellerman, last time I checked, Kobe Bryant retired, is retired. Derek Jeter was not retired when A-Rod arrived. They were teammates together. Not only that, people, because even though A-Rod was a shortstop, but he had to move to third base because Jeter wasn't moving from shortstop at that particular moment in time. So that element came into the equation as well. That's very true, Stephen A. Smith, but to Max Kellerman's point, everyone knows that there was a rivalry between A-Rod and Derek Jeter, who at one point in the late 90s or mid 90s were considered friends until Alex Rodriguez had a relatively controversial interview with the magazine where he claimed that Derek Jeter kind of had it easy playing with the Yankees because A-Rod was expected to bring forth a lot of top level stats, you know, be, be amongst the leaders in the league in home runs and RBIs and those things were not truly expected of Derek Jeter. For those of us who remember that era back in the mid 90s, it actually was a three man race in regards to who was the best shortstop or the best young shortstop in Major League Baseball. It was Derek Jeter, it was Alex Rodriguez, and it was Nomar Garcia Parra of the Boston Red Sox, who unfortunately for Nomar kind of ended up being the Elgin Baylor of the Boston Red Sox. Because if I remember correctly, he retired the year before they finally won the championship in 2004. If I'm wrong about that, one of you brothers can correct me, but if I remember correctly, he retired the year before they finally won the championship. But I do like Max Kellerman's analogy of Jeter and A-Rod in juxtaposition to Kobe Bryant and LeBron James. I think that it is relatively pertinent. But I will say this, I agree more with Stephen A. In regards to the question of whether or not LeBron could win over LA, it's just going to be about how many wins he can raise the level of the team to in this up and coming regular season. I think that the Laker fans, for the most part, the rational ones, are looking at this more as a business arrangement than a labor of love. Kobe was drafted by the team. They watched him grow. It's a totally different dynamic. As well. Number three, you yourself, Max Kellerman, Stephen A., skillfully, as always, using your own words against you. Is it not Max Kellerman mm -hmm. who lamented how Kobe looked? in the latter part of his years in yeah. L.A. So my point to you is you've been away, of course he's heard of age, attrition, and injury, yeah, but you've been away from the playoffs for five years. You've been irrelevant, and now Kobe is gone. So LeBron comes. There is no Kobe to share it with. You're going to have Kobe literally in the stands rooting for you along with other Laker greats. It's not it's never your show. Be their guy. Yeah, it's not a perfect analogy. All right, all right, listen, listen. You know what? Today is not the day I'm going to deal with this with the two of you. I have nothing else to say. I will see y'all in L.A. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we will see. I'm going to be in New York. Talk, talk, talk. We will see how y'all two are acting when the bright lights and the Staples Center come on uh, me, I'm this about October me. and beyond. I'm talking about, I'm talking about the Lincoln Five. I agree. If LeBron James has a couple of his customary 45-point 11 assists, 9 rebound games, especially in the first couple of weeks of the season, the Laker fans are going to forget about the LeBron-Kobe rivalry, which never was truly a rivalry in the first place because they never got a chance to face each other in the finals. And for the most part, LeBron James dominated Kobe in their regular season matchups. He just did. He dominated him. If I were doing LA Drive Time Radio like I used to, I would lead that city in the direction. I want to interview Laker fans. I used to interview some Laker fans and ask them about this. I want to do a big It's not about comparing him to Kobe. It's not about comparing him to Kobe. No, it is. With no Kobe gone. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Do you agree? That guy. Do you agree that, you know, Kobe says, hey, Lakers, my fans are fans of winning and fans of the purple and gold. It's not entirely true. Would you agree that Kobe has fans that are loyal to him before even the Lakers? Yes. Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. Once again, he has one of the strongest cults of personalities in all of entertainment. His fan base is unbelievably emotional. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. All right, talk, 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 talk. Uh -huh. Let me answer it. People love it. Let me it. answer it. Well, that's, that's, let me, come on now. Come on now. That's part Let's one. Answer that. When you're comparing him right. to Kobe in terms of the pantheon of great, sure. I am saying to you, ignore all of that for a second. The Lakers situation has been so moribund. That with yes, and the moribund aspect of their franchise was due largely to the fact that Kobe, it's all about winning Bryant, held the team hostage his last couple of years while he was there, knowing that the team was not going to be good. And strangely enough, with no Phil Jackson there, 
the team was not even close to making the playoffs. Isn't that interesting? But, you know, we're inundated with all these notions about how Kobe Bryant put the team on his back and blah, blah, blah. When, in fact, his actions precipitated the lowest point in the history of the franchise. Kobe gone and LeBron there now. LeBron being at the Staples Center will almost be the equivalent and I'm of Kobe you, being what I'm there telling you is now. Are you ignore it. Well, LeBron James being at the Staples Center will not be the equivalent of Kobe Bryant being there. Because Kobe Bryant at his best has never played at the level that LeBron James has played at his last couple of years in Cleveland. Those are just facts. Look up LeBron James' numbers. On offense, the guy shooting 54%, 55% from the field. Kobe Bryant has never had a season where he shot over 46%. He just hasn't. I think his best season was somewhere around 46.7 or 46.8, somewhere around there. Like his best shooting season was about Jordan's worst shooting season where he played a full season with Chicago. I think that Jordan's last year in Chicago, he shot about 46.5%. Kobe's best year with the Lakers was about 46.5 or 46.7, something like that. One of his fanboys will look it up, I'm sure. But LeBron James plays at a level of proficiency and efficiency that Kobe Bryant has never dreamed of a day in his life. And those are just facts. Are you ignoring the fact that Lakers fans, who are Kobe fans first, don't feel competitive with LeBron? It's not that they won't embrace him and root for him and hope he wins, but there's always going to be an underlying thing where I they want to the protect point, their I guy. I think your point would be incredibly more valid if Kobe were playing or he had just retired and the Lakers were relevant, the fact that they've been so bad... That mitigates it, such, it, it is but such, it doesn't erase it. It is such a godsend. I am saying to you that I expect the Staples Center environment this upcoming season to be tantamount to when Kobe was there. Not with Shaq and the crew, but when Kobe, Gasol, and, and, and Bynum and those guys, this environment will never ambiance him will be the like that. They will never... I agree with that, but I also agree with Kellerman, and I think that Kellerman has a far greater understanding of the tonality of the Kobe Bryant fan base in L.A. than Stephen A. Smith does, because as he states, he did drive time radio in L.A., so he knows how the Kobe Bryant fan base is. Stephen A. Smith is more accustomed to the atmosphere of the stadium when Kobe was there, but I do agree with Max Kellerman. I think that there is a, a portion of the most fervent Kobe Bryant fans that feel threatened by LeBron James. And they don't want LeBron James to come into that realm, into that zone of LA, and possibly eclipse their star player. The funny thing is, is that I think that Kobe Bryant thinks the opposite. I think that he's happy that LeBron is coming to the Lakers. Because I think that he understands that there's no way that LeBron is going to win two championships on the Lakers in the next four seasons. He knows that. And that's going to provide a proper barometer for him to prove that he's greater than LeBron. I love him. Watch. The way they love Kobe. No, no. In the end, they'll love him while he's there, though. Yeah, they'll love him while he's there. They'll love him while he's there. What do we care? I love him there. What do we care? What do we care when he's gone? They'll love him while he's there. Yeah. Love him when you're with. I think, in fact, love him when you're with. We're, 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 moving, we're moving to New York, but maybe we should split our time between New York and L.A. Well, I have oh, to. do you have such a two divas that I deal with? I can't with it. It's, an, it's an obligation. It's an obligation. Unfortunately, um, ESPN right, insists that I spend more time in I'll L.A. It's really guys. tragic. Uh, uh, they, 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 you guys are the stars. I got to follow what you it's do. A, it's a tough life, but I, I have to go to L.A. I'm sorry. I really. Yeah, I bet you are. You hate going out to L.A. and dealing with all those L.A. thotties. But anyway, that's basically it on that topic. We'll see what happens with L.A. Braun this up-and-coming season. So, peace.